All right, guys, I have another strange story for you today. This one is about Robert Ivan Nichols. He was born September 12, 1926, in New Albany, Indiana. As soon as he graduated high school, he joined the Navy in 1944. He worked as a firefighter for the USS Aaron Ward, which was attacked by the Japanese in May 1945. Robert was injured in the attack and received the Purple Heart. He returned home sometime between 1945 and 1947 to New Albany, Indiana, where I believe he lived with his mother in the home he grew up in. Once he moved back, he joined a band and got himself a job delivering soda. He married Laverne Court and had three sons. This would have been, I believe, 1947. They were living around that time in Louisville, Kentucky. On March 11, 1948, Robert was arrested for committing a statutory crime in a place called Bath, which I believe is in Indiana. It didn't say where it was. There are multiple Baths and Bath counties, but I believe this was Bath, Indiana. Um, if you're wondering what a statutory crime can be, um, it can include things like DUI, drug possession or manufacturing, public intoxication, driving without a license, hit and run, reckless driving, and it can actually include prostitution and indecent exposure as well, among other things. At some point, Robert told his wife he was going to leave her and that soon she'd understand why. And in 1964, he divorced his wife and left her and the children, and he moved to Dearborn, Michigan. Some people believe he was dropping hints that he was about to do something heinous and would be caught. But I believe he was referencing something he had already done and was trying to prepare himself and his wife for the fact that, well, he believed he was going to be caught for what he had done. And if that's the case, and he was telling her that because he had done something already, then that means he would have committed a crime more than likely in the early 60s, Probably in the Louisville area, just because he seems to stay in that area for a good bit of time. And there's no uh, records of him traveling for work or for other things to other areas. So I believe that the crime, if he committed a crime, it could have happened around the Louisville area. In March 1965, he was living in Richmond, California. And that same month, he sent mail to his son from Napa, California. And that's the last communication that he had with his family. So they reported him missing sometime during 1965. And then the trail goes cold and we don't hear anything about him until 1976 or 77 when he stopped filing with the IRS under his real name. In September 1978, he purchased the identity of an eight-year-old boy, Joseph Newton Chandler III, who had been killed in an auto accident in Texas with his family in 1945. He had purchased this identity in Rapid City, South Dakota, and he would use this identity for the rest of his life. Around 1978, he moved to Cleveland, Ohio, 
and he remained in this general area for the remainder of his life, basically. Um, his final home was like 26 miles away from Cleveland. So that general area, he, he stayed there for, at that point, for the rest of his life. And then something very strange happened. In February 1989, he was seen at a local emergency room for lacerations to his privates that he said he had received from a vacuum cleaner. And I'm not going to go into that, but I'm wondering, does this point to him being sexually deviant? Could that be what he was referring to? Did he do something like that in Louisville? And that's what he was talking about with his wife. I don't know. Because we don't really know much about this man to know what he was capable of. In October 1992, he attended a Halloween social gathering dressed as a mobster. And this was unusual because Nichols was basically a hermit. He had no friends. He wanted nothing to do with people. Um, he just stayed to himself and he believes he's on the run at this point so he doesn't want to draw attention to himself. Um, it's said that at that party he didn't talk to anyone and that he just was strange, but he was a strange guy. In 1997, he was laid off from his job, which was, he was um, in some engineering type of job most of his life. Um, but this job was headquartered in Wycliffe, or Life, Wycliffe, Ohio. In the year 2000, he had colon cancer surgery in Lake County, Ohio, which I didn't look that up, but I'm assuming that's um, the Cleveland area. At the beginning of 2002, so the first few months of the year, somewhere around there, he purchased a, we'll just say a weapon, because I'm not sure what I can and can't say here on YouTube. So he purchased that. And on July 23rd, 2002, he ended his life in the bathroom of his small East Lake, Ohio home. His body was found one week later. In 2014, the, the Chandler case was reopened because they didn't know that he was Robert Ivan Nichols at this point. They just knew the name he was going by. But what had happened was when the guy died, he had like $82,000 in the bank. So they were trying to find his next of kin and they couldn't. And that's when they discovered he wasn't who he said he was. So they uh, reopened this case in 2014. And then in 2018, his true identity was discovered. So they basically used his DNA from um, a hospital visit. And they put it into a DNA database, such as Ancestry or, you know, something like that. And they were able to figure out that he was Robert Ivan Nichols. Police believed Nichols was running from the law for a crime he had committed, but they couldn't figure out the crime. They could never tie him to anything. He had never been in trouble other than his brief arrest when he was 22. And they even asked the public for help, you know, if they could if they had any information or if they could kind of figure out maybe what this guy could have done. Um, 
they just couldn't, could not figure this guy out. Nichols went to great lengths to conceal his identity. Of course, he changed his name and he moved out of the area, but it is also believed he filed down his fingerprints because in his home, his fingerprints in the home didn't exist. There were none. And on the weapon he used, uh, there were no fingerprints and they just couldn't get fingerprints off of him. So that... It's pretty crazy, actually. I mean, you have to really, really think they're after you to do something like that. He also kept a pack bag with him at all times. And co-workers would say, um, go on to say that there were times he would grab his, his bag and say, they're getting close. And then he'd disappear for periods of time before coming back. Some have speculated that Nichols was the Zodiac Killer. So I have some, a few facts up here about the Zodiac Killer. Let me read this. So the Zodiac Killer span of crimes was 68 to 69. He was a thrill killer. And he sent letters to the police between 69 and 74. And the Zodiac Killer definitely wanted attention. He wanted all eyes on him. He wanted everyone to know what he had done. Um, it's believed the Zodiac Killer was in the military. And specifically... Uh, it was stated the Navy. So, and I don't know if you guys remember the sketch. I'm going to try to load it here. The sketch of um, the Zodiac Killer. But there, there are some similarities in resemblance there between the Zodiac Killer and Nichols. Um, not exact, of course, or, some differences, but I do see the resemblance. Um, and of course, some of these facts that I read off uh, definitely could be nickels based on that, especially the military thing. But um, there were differences. And for me, a big one, which one of them, they did compare handwriting samples between the two, and the handwriting was different. But the big one for me is that the Zodiac Killer wanted attention, and Nichols wanted no attention. He was constantly afraid of his identity being found out. Um, it, just the personality that he had, just didn't really, to me, it, did, it didn't fit. Um the personality of the Zodiac Killer. I would, if I had to bet if he was the Zodiac Killer or not, I say no. But is it possible? Yes. It, the time frame lines up. Um, you know, and Nichols, as far as I know and what I've seen, he never went on to have, like, another partner. He never got married again. He just stayed by himself, and somebody like the Zodiac Killer, you would have to imagine, would be a lot easier to get away with it if you're a single person and not a family man. I mean, there are some things there that I could say, yeah, that makes sense. It could be Nichols, but again, I just, deep down in my gut, I just don't think it's him. I believe... Nichols' crime occurred between somewhere between 1948 and 1964 before he went to California. It more than likely occurred in the 60s because he had a telltale heart. And I believe that's why he told his wife she would soon find out, meaning he would be caught soon. 
And I believe the crime more than likely happened near Louisville because that's where he spent his time. But certainly Indiana or Ohio uh, could be contenders as well. So I searched records and I couldn't connect Nichols to any crime in the 60s. And the information online is limited. But there's no like prolific crimes occurring in the areas where he was known to have been other than the Zodiac killings because he was obviously in California when that was going on. Um, and he, he's really unaccounted for during his time in California. We just don't know much about that time. But he had several years there where he was married, living in Louisville, that he's unaccounted for we just assume he's living the married life and being a dad and a husband and working and all that stuff. But there's a lot of time in there. And he could have committed some crazy crime. I mean, it has to be something significant for him to go to those lengths. It's not just like he jaywalked across the street and said, oh, I need a new identity. I mean, something big had to have happened. But what? I cannot figure it out. I have searched and searched. And there's just nothing. So my next question would be, did he even commit a crime at all? Or was this just in his head? Is that possible? Did he, was he paranoid? I mean, there's nothing to say that mentally he had a problem or was unstable, but certainly could be a possibility. So my question to you guys is, what if he did commit a crime? What crime do you think he committed? Do you think he murdered someone? Um, did was was it a sexual deviant crime? Is he a serial offender? What could he have done? And do any of you know of anything? I would say between nineteen forty eight and nineteen sixty four in the Midwest that went unsolved. Somewhere around Louisville, Indiana, Ohio, those areas. Is there something that the police overlooked? Is there something that I overlooked? What what could he have done? So feel free to leave your comments. And if you have any other strange stories that's happened in Ohio, crimes, missing persons, anything like that, uh, feel free to share your information and I will look into it. Thanks.